right to be in the country's politics and the power structure. Supriya. Supriya, I mean, she's my co-panelist, but I'm going to say it today. She's compelled her opponents to take note of her. Hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hard, hard work, marshalling your arguments, getting your facts right. And I would say that about most spokespersons of parties today, women spokespersons. I mean, I hope she'll go further and she'll go places. Her party will give her her due. Lekin ye jo kehte hai na, aray par usne kya kya, kaisi hai, ekdam laddu faddu hai. You know, it's a way of dismissing women without giving them. And I will say this also, Supriya, the most known chera in your party, Priyanka, after Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, uh, is Priyanka Gandhi Vadra. Should she not have been given one of the UP seats Amethi and Raibareli to contest from? I mean, last election, it was ladki hoon, lad sakti hoon, it bombed, but your party is completely decimated in UP. It needs time to build. But no, she's going to be, she wasn't given either of those seats and she will be contesting from why not vacated by her brother. If I may respond to that question, firstly, thank you very much. Uh, I think opponents take note if you marshal your facts. And, uh, I think it's the same for a man or a woman. When you're on air or when you're taking on your opponents, it doesn't matter what your gender is. I think it matters what your caliber is. It matters how much research you've done. It matters how many facts you're willing to throw in their face. Uh, and they will be forced to take note. So thank you very much for the compliment, Neerjaji. And you're somebody I, as a journalist, also have looked up to. You know, let's not make politics an exception as far as roles of women are concerned. I have headed newsrooms like these. I was the executive editor at ET Now, and I know there's a certain bias against women, and especially women who get into matrimony. The next obvious thing that an editor will tell you is, you know what, she's going to have a baby, should we promote her this year? Hell yes, you will promote her this year. And I ensured that women who worked with me, and I'm very proud of the fact that women who worked with me were promoted. Uh, they could avail their mat maternity leave. I made special provisions for them because they were lactating mothers even after they joined work. I think these are things that are true not just for politics, but for workplaces in general. But if I may take on the question that you left, there is a, there is a bias that comes even from the assumption that Priyanka Gandhi should have contested one of the two seats of UP. I think we did not want to fall into the trap of the BJP. We did not want her restricted in those two seats for the rest of the campaign. She was campaigning in one, she was campaigning in Raibareli. She was spearheading the campaign in Amethi. She was also doing multiple campaigns across the country. So we did not want her to be uh, cowed down to that one seat where she was contesting. And the truth is that if you contest a seat, and I've contested an election on my own, if you contest a seat, you will be uh, sort of, you know, cowed down there. You cannot get out. So I don't think we would have fallen into the BJP's trap. I do believe she's a, very, um, she's a very assertive woman, and I hope to see her in parliament soon, and I hope those elections will be notified that haven't. But I will say that, you know, as far as women in politics are concerned, we perhaps have to go an extra mile to prove ourselves. There is no denying that. Because nobody questions the caliber of a man, but a woman's caliber, a woman's capacity, a woman's ability to how much time she can give. And I was hearing a part of the conversation that you were having with the previous panel. And being at the receiving end of that onslaught every single day, I will tell you one thing. I head the social media for the Congress party. I am one of their vociferous speakers. The only threat and the only abuse that a woman gets on social media is sexual in nature. You will be abused. And the line where I draw is, I don't care about these two rupee trolls. Because they get their strength from anonymity. And I say this over and over again. Chances are that the same troll who's trolling me, if he bumps into me at the airport, will ask me for a selfie. And I've seen this happen. It's true. But the anonymity, the fact that you're a faceless troll sitting somewhere, you can call me names. The only line I draw is when they attack your children. That's the line I draw. If they attack my daughter, sexually, if they say anything sexual about her, I take them to the cleaners and I ensure that they're either arrested, they're nabbed, they're answerable for it. But otherwise, you know, who cares? You've got to have a thick skin like you have, you know, I think women in general, well, the moment you step out of your house, it's unfortunate 
but you're forced to have a thick skin because you know even in edit meetings there are 20 people who are sitting in that edit meeting chances are 18 of them are men and there are two women you've got to speak the loudest to be heard or you've got to be the sharpest in that room so i do believe that i think a certain amount of hardening of skin is very important and you shouldn't pay attention to these trolls i mean who are they they are anonymous trolls who who don't have a life wo chintu chandigarh mein baith ke mere bare mein kya keh raha hai mujhe kya farak pad raha hai what matters to me it is what somebody who knows me what matters to me is an opinion from neerja choudhary who is a journalist i've looked up to who is very critical of me sometimes but her opinion matters to me somebody sitting in uh, you know patna or somebody sitting in lucknow saying something about me from 